dear children in the previous class we saw pure substances and mixtures in this class today we are going to see about the separation of mixtures learning objectives of this session filtering sieving churning threshing winnowing hand picking magnetic separation and food adulteration keywords of this topic hand picking winnowing w i n n o w i n g winnowing magnetic separation decantation adulteration particles threshing threshing and sieving now what is separation let we see the definition the process by which the components of mixture are isolated and removed from each other to get pure substance is called separation the process by which the components of mixture are isolated and removed from each other to get pure substance is called separation why do we need separation there are three motives for us to need separation when we need to remove impurities or harmful substances from the mixtures for example stones from rice second when the useful component has to be separated from other components for example petrol from petroleum third motive is when a substance has to be obtained in highly pure form for example gold from gold mines now let us see some methods of separation through a small video for you watch this Kevin and Tina are on a road trip with their parents. This lesson is about various methods of separation. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the reasons for separating substances. You will also be able to describe the methods of separation of substances such as hand picking, threshing, winnowing and sieving. Looks like we have a problem with the car. The engine is overheated. Don't know why. I'll have to get a mechanic. Hey, Tina, look. We have stopped right near someone's farmland. I wonder if we can take a walk and see it up close. Dad, can we go up to those huts and take a look at this farm while you fix the car? Okay. But be careful. and don't go too far your mom and i will keep an eye on you both from here hello who are you our car has broken down nearby but our dad is working on it we just came by to take a look at your farm would you mind not at all in fact I can show you around if you're interested. Let me just finish cleaning these grains. Cleaning the grains? How do you do that? Well, I'm just picking out the impurities in these grains by hand. 
The grains are quite big in size and the amount of grain that I need to clean is not much. So I can do that quite easily. Hand picking allows me to separate the good grains from the waste and impurities so that I have clean dal to cook for dinner tonight. Hand picking is the basic method for separation of substances. It involves simply picking out substances by hand and separating them from others. The substances being separated may be impurities that have to be thrown away, like in this case. Or it may be that both the substances being separated are useful, such as if you separate green grapes from black ones from a mixture of the two. I'm done hand-picking these grains. Let's take a walk around the farm now. As you can see, these are wheat fields. The wheat is ready for harvest now. Look, there's my husband. What is he doing? He's threshing some of the wheat that has been harvested and dried. Threshing? What's that? Yes. Once the wheat has been harvested, the stalks are dried. Then, each grain of wheat has to be separated from the stalks to which it's attached, so that it can be ground into flour. This method of separating the grain from the stalk is called threshing. It's basically the beating of these dry stalks to shake off the dried grains. It can be done by hand, by cattle, or by using machines. Traditionally, threshing was done by hand, but the cattle help do this job quickly. Nowadays, threshing machines are also used to separate large quantities of grain at a time. We have one of these machines. It's called a combine harvester. You can see it there in the distance. This is a smart way to separate grain from stock. Imagine how long this would take if the grain had to be hand-picked off the stalks. So, once the wheat has been threshed, all that's left to do is grind it into wheat flour, right? Not quite. There is another step before that. You see, even though the large stalks can be separated from the grains by threshing, the wheat grains still have dried husk and chaff, which has to be separated and thrown away before the wheat can be ground. But can that be done by hand-picking? No. It would be too difficult and would take too much time. Instead, we use a method called winnowing. Let me show you. In this basket, I have some wheat grains that are still mixed with their husk. Watch what happens now. The husk is blowing away. That's right. The husk is much lighter than the grain. So when I shake it gently and let it drop to the ground, only the wheat grains collect here, while the husk blows away. Wow! That's a neat way of separating wheat from husk. So, do you sell the grains in the market once they have been cleaned? Yes, sometimes. However, we also have a grinding unit on our farm. So, we are able to sell finished wheat flour or atta in the market. This is our small wheat grinding machine. Cleaned wheat grains are poured in from the top of the machine. 
The machine grinds the wheat into a fine powder or flour, which comes out from this opening and collects at the bottom in these large bags. And then this flour is packaged and taken away to sell in the market? Not right away. There is one final step that needs to be completed before it can be sold. You see, this machine grinds the wheat quite well, but there are still some thicker pieces or granules in the flour that need to be separated and thrown away. This is called the wheat bran. Can you guess how this is separated from the wheat flour? Well, it can't be winnowing since we don't want the flour to blow away in the wind. That's right. Instead, the method we use to separate this is called sieving. Sieving is a method of separating substances that are of different sizes. For example, this wheat flour has some fine powdered wheat as well as some bigger impurities. When I put this through a sieve, the fine powder falls through the small holes in the sieve, while the thicker impurities remain as they are too big for these holes. And hence, the substances are separated. Once the wheat has been sieved, it is packaged and is ready to be sold in the market. I didn't know so many steps have to be completed before we got to eat our rotis. Harvesting, threshing, winnowing, grinding and sieving. In this lesson, you learnt about various methods of separation. Now, you should be able to explain the reasons for separating substances. You will also be able to describe the methods for separation of substances, such as hand picking, threshing, winnowing, and sieving. This is butter. Do you know how butter is made? When milk is stirred vigorously in a churn, butter is obtained. What liquid left behind is the tasty, nutritive buttermilk that is relished by many as a refreshing summer drink. Do you see that two useful components emerge from a mixture when this method of separation is employed? I'm going to combine two substances. Table salt and iron filings. When you combine two or more substances, what is it called? What do you notice? Does the salt still look like salt? Is the iron still iron? How can I separate them? back into their lone substances. I'm going to use what I know about the physical properties of salt and the physical properties of iron to separate them back into their original substances. I know that iron is magnetic and salt is not. So one way I can do this is with a magnet. There's most of the iron filings separated from the salt. And a few more. What's another way I can separate the salt from the iron? What are other ways that other mixtures can be separated? Why do you think it's important to know how to separate mixtures? What else do you know about mixtures? 
hope you understand the different methods of separation of mixtures now let me see about what is food adulteration harmful or unwanted substances mixed with the substances that we buy is called food adulteration consumption of any adulterated food will be harmful and can be health hazard for example used to used tea leaves are added as a adulterant in tea powder and turmeric powder is adulterated with a bright yellow chemical which is poisonous to our health like this many food adulterations are there we have to careful to buy the things without any adulteration and we have to use the healthy products only now let us see the home fun for you in column 1 some methods of separation is given and you have to match it with column 2 with the proper definition of that hope you enjoyed this session thank you children